in him in him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who are the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the phrase for the praise of his glory and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation when you believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised holy spirit who is the deposit the down payment the guarantee for our inheritance until the redemption of those who are god's possession to the praise of his glory we talked about how those who are included were included because they heard and they believed they heard and they believed when they heard and they believed the message of truth that was preached to them they were included how were they included they were included by putting the seal of the holy spirit in their life by putting the seal of the holy spirit in their life it wasn't just for your personal sake it wasn't just for your corporate sake but to show the whole world that you are his that you belong to him so you don't live your life alone you have your spirit and you have god's spirit intertwined cohabiting this earthly body to bring about the will of god to bring about the will of god you say i can't do it you're right you can't therefore god has given you his spirit who can he can he can so in him in him in him in him is where it's at that's where the action is that's how this functions and you were included in Christ till the day of your redemption so that when Jesus comes back those who are marked with the spirit of god will be caught up to the praise of his glory now let's get into our passage for this morning which is verses 15 onwards for this reason for this reason so mark the word this because he's not just talking about any reason he's talking about what he just talked about he's referring back to what he just talked about we referenced 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 21 and 22 and now it is god who makes us both one jew and gentile stand firm in christ he anointed us set his seal on our ownership about all over us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guarantee of what is to come so we looked at that passage as well i give thanks for this reason what is this reason this reason is because you were included This reason is because you have the Holy Spirit. This reason is because you showed faith in Christ. The primary purpose that the Holy Spirit was given to us was to indwell us. Was to indwell us. A believer is not a believer without the Holy Spirit. A Christian is not a Christian without Jesus living in him, the Spirit of God living in him. He is not a Christian because of what he believes. he's he's a christian because of the result of his belief the result of his belief is when you believed you were included you were included and that means the spirit of god came to live in you and the spirit of god took you to live in the, in jesus you getting that dynamic here so jesus in you and you in jesus what's on the inside what's on the outside you're sandwiched you're sandwiched so your own conscience doesn't condemn you and no one else from outside can condemn you from your own conscience you see jesus through you see yourself through jesus and from outside others will see you through jesus at least god does why were we given the holy spirit by the indwelling by the indwelling or indwelling us he seals us he seals us as god's inheritance and begins the work of regeneration in us here on earth regeneration that's a word you want to learn regeneration is the work of taking the corroded result of sin whatever has become damaged whatever has fallen apart whatever has been destroyed by sin god does not condemn it once he has forgiven you for that the, the holy spirit is given to you to then begin the rebuilding process the return to innocence process the re re the renovation and the reconstruction process of turning you back into being like the lord jesus You are not doing this it's happening in your sleep 
In your unconscious spirit, the work of God is happening in your life. With every hardship in your life, with every difficult relationship, with every difficult moment in your life, with everything that you go through, the spirit of God is churning something within you to make you more and more like Jesus. Never complain, never grumble. There are no coincidences, there are no chances in the believer's life. God is using everything in our life. The pain, the shame, the dishonor, the the rewards, the great times, the accomplishments. God is using everything in our life to make us more like Jesus. He does the work of regeneration. So this is a personal work. He's doing it in me, in Jeremy. He's killing Jeremy, taking Jeremy into the grave as he raises Christ in Jeremy. I'll just come back to that soon. As he raises Christ in Jeremy so that day after day there's more Jesus in Jeremy and there's more Jeremy in Jesus. That sounds good. It just came to me. I just got it. I hope you also got it. More and more there's Jeremy in Jesus. So he's covered by Christ. Graciously covered by Christ. Disappearing, merging into the beauty and the magnificence. And then more and more Jesus is shining through him. That's the personal work. That's the personal work. So the Holy Spirit has been given to you by the indwelling, by indwelling us. He seals us as God's inheritance and begins the work of regeneration in us, here on earth, in this life, here on earth. So the regeneration process is something that God is doing here on earth. This is for your personal relationship with Christ. This is where you get intimate with God. This is where you are becoming like Christ. Then... By the indwelling, he also joins us. The word in the Bible, word in the Bible is used, baptized or baptizo. He's he joins us all into one body. He makes you and me one. He takes Jew and Gentile and makes them one. He takes Punjabi and Malayali and makes them one. That's powerful. I'm not talking about marriage, I'm talking about. In one spirit, he takes all of us, ethnicities, backgrounds, colors, warts and all. He takes us and makes us one. So that now you are a member of the same body I'm a member. When you hurt, when I scream for joy, you scream for joy. We are one body. We are one body. So he's doing a work. The Holy Spirit is doing a work in my life. The Holy Spirit is doing a work in the body of Christ. And my identity in Christ is not just individual, not just on my own, but it is in Christ. It is by the power and by the purpose he has placed me in Christ. By the position in Christ that I have, that I find my identity. Who am I in Jesus? I am a son of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a servant of God. Where am I serving in the body? Then we get into ministry. Then we talk about ministry. By the indwelling as he joins, baptizes us into the body, we who are many are made one. The Bible says, we who are many are made one. This is for our corporate relationship with Christ. So I don't have a relationship with Jesus on my own. I have a relationship with Jesus on my own. That's very important. But I also have a relationship with you, along with you. So, so here's Jesus, correct? Okay, And he is the head of the body. So my relationship to you is through him. Like this hand is my right hand and this hand is my left hand. Left hand. This hand belongs to this hand by its relationship to the head. Okay? So my relationship to you is in Christ. You can go to main USA, you can go to Kazakhstan, you can go to Africa, you can go to at, uh, the Atlantic, you can go to Greenland and you'll find somebody in your family. We have family everywhere. And God has brought us into that family by putting us, putting the Holy Spirit in us. I wanted to reach back into that, that very important doctrine and understand how the Holy Spirit unpacks us, how he, how, how he works in us. So, when you heard and believed, you were included and sealed for this reason. And ever since you put your faith in him, ever since you did that, I have been thanking you unstoppably. I have been thanking you. Ever since I heard of your faith in Christ, ever since I heard of your love for all God's people. Verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. Circle all. Very important. Very important. Do you love people? Yes. Do you love all people? That's what God does in you. That's what God does to you. He gives you the ability to love the unlovable. He even gives you the ability to love your own loved ones. 
which is a greater challenge. Because when you're loving the unlovable, you're feeling all like pious and all. You're feeling all, you know, spiritual and all. When you're loving your own loved ones, you kind of like have to do it. So Paul says, I have not stopped giving thanks. I have not stopped giving thanks. That means there's a continuous spirit of gratitude. Remembering you in my prayers. And then he says, I keep asking. So it's an ongoing prayer. It's an ongoing thanks and an ongoing. Circle that. I keep asking. He doesn't say I ask, I have asked. I keep asking. What is Paul asking for the believers who have placed their faith in Christ, who have been indwelt with the Holy Spirit, who have been regener being regenerated by the Spirit of God, who have been brought into one body? What is Paul asking for those who have already got everything from God? Do you get me? Do you get me? What have they, what's left? What's left? They've been saved in Christ. They've put their faith in Christ. They've been indwelled with the Holy Spirit. They've been put in the church. And God has just God given them everything they need. What do you pray for such people? Here's what Paul prays for them. I keep asking. So you want to keep uh, take that phrase and attach it to everything that he is going to pray for. I keep asking, I keep asking, I keep asking. Got it? I keep asking that God our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you. That's number one may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom. I'm praying to you that God will give you the spirit of revelation. Now he's already said that you have been indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So he's not saying that I pray that, he gives, that you get the Holy Spirit. No. He's not praying that you get the Holy Spirit. That sometime in some, through some moment, some meetings that you will receive. No, uh-uh. You have already got the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now he's praying that he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now he's saying that the spirit of God that has been given to you may result in why he was given to you. Because it is possible that believers can receive the Holy Spirit but continue to live in such a way that the purpose that the spirit of given, was given to you would not be accomplished. That would not be accomplished. That means you can still continue to have the Holy Spirit and live a life not knowing God, not walking in his purposes. Is that possible? Unfortunately, yes. Because God will never override your will. That he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that, underline, so that, that's the reason, that's the purpose, so that you may feel him better. You may feel his presence You're too gullible. You're too gullible. No feel fool. That you may, like you believe it, that you may. So you put your faith in Christ. Paul's prayer is that your faith would result in knowledge. Knowledge. You fall in love with somebody, but five years later, you know the person. Now you're not in love anymore. <laughs> now you're loving on purpose. Now you're working on it. Yeah? Are you with me? Prayer. What do you pray for those God has given the Holy Spirit to? That they would grow in their knowledge of him. That they would understand why God has given them the spirit. Number one, I keep asking the, that the God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. What will you get from the spirit of God? Wisdom. And number two, revelation. Number two, revelation. I'll unpack this even more as we go forward. Verse 18. I pray... I continue to pray, I keep asking God that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know. Ah, oh, there it is again, twice over, that you may know. So faith must turn to knowledge. The prayer is that every believer grows from the point where I say, I trust and believe Jesus to now I know, I know. Get all arrogant about it, get all sure about it. I know, I've been there. 
Like Billy Graham once said, when somebody said to Billy Graham, he says, God is dead. He says, that's crazy. I just talked to him. <laughs> and he just spoke to me. That conviction, that, that real life. And people know that you know. People know that you know God and people know that God knows you. They're not even sure that God knows them, but they know that God knows you. That kind of strength of witness. That the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. That the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. So your eyes, your normal eyes, see what you see. I see beautiful people sitting in front of me, godly people listening to God's word. Okay. But the eyes of your heart, the heart is the seat of your being. The heart is who you really are. The heart is what was conceived in the moment when you're, where in your mother's womb, God breathed life into you. Where he gave you the miracle of birth. So the body that you walk around with, what you look like, your features, all of that is God's gift to you through your mom and dad. But who you are is your spirit. Your spirit carries this body. It allows for this body to inhabit your, it, it, it. And then it eventually is going to fall to the ground. And that spirit is going to continue into heaven. That spirit is the seat of your will. Are you with me? That spirit is where you decide who I am, who God is, who I'll believe, who I trust, what I want to do, who I want to be, what I want to do with my life. That spirit, we call that the human spirit. We call that the strength of the ability of the person within to overcome physical uh, limitations, emotional limitations, psychological limitations. We call the human spirit, the indomitable spirit that is able to rise above every limitation and to accomplish the impossible. That spirit that God placed in you is the, the seat of your volition. It is your will. And he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart the eyes of your heart will be open. That your will, the eyes of your will will want God. Will want him. You don't want him right now with the whole heart. You don't want him. You don't want his complete control in your life. You don't want him to tell you what to do in your marriage or in your relationships or in your career or in your priorities. You just want his blessing but you don't want him. That eyes of your heart would be open to see what God has given for you. What God is. What is he got for you as I close number one you may know the hope to which he has called you when your eyes get open you will see the hope to which he has called you you will see the riches of his glorious inheritance in the holy people in his holy people and number three you see the incomparable great power for us who believe now circle power and I'm going to wrap I'm taking three more minutes I'm going to just unpack power for a bit and I want to finish this passage with that we'll come back again to it don't worry that you may know the hope to which he has called you. When your eyes of your heart are opened, you find these three things. The hope to which he has called you. The, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the holy people. And his incomparably great power. Incomparably great power. Then he goes on to further describe that power. That power. That power. Verse 19. Is the same mighty power. Mighty strength that was exerted. You know what the Greek word is? Dunamos. You know where that word, what we get in the English word from that? Dynamite. It's not dynamite, it's dynamite. <laughs> Dunamos, that dynamic power, power to be able to make something happen. That power, that power is the same mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. What kind of power does it take to raise somebody from the dead? Okay. He exerted to raise Christ from the dead. And then what kind of power does it take to take a person raised from the dead and seat him right next to God? The right hand of God is the full rule of God. It's the full rule of God. It's not just on the right side. When you say right hand of God, you're talking about the full authority has been granted to the person on the right. The full authority in heaven and on earth. Far above all authority. Far above all rule, power and dominion. That means this person has been taken from the grave all the way to the highest place that every power known to man, known to existence, comes under submission to that one person. Now what power does it take you to give that power to that person? What power can do that? Is there any power? Power apart from God no so it's not a power apart from God so he's obviously talking about God how do I know keep going far above all rule authority power and dominion and every name that is invoked 
invoked. Any name you heard, this name is going to be greater. Not only in the present age, not only in the past, present, but also in the future. And God, verse 22. So circle that power and then circle God because what he's using as synonyms are power and God. So when he's saying that power, he's saying that God. Are you with me? Are you with me? He's not talking about a power generated power. He's talking about a person. God the Father has taken Christ the Son, put him to death, raised him from the grave to the point where now everything is seated under him because he can trust his son to bring everything back under the rule of God. Because in, in the end, and that God placed all things under his feet, appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. It doesn't get better bigger than that. It isn't more fuller than that. So that he fills everything and everything. And that Jesus will then submit himself to God the Father. So God, Jesus is going to restore everything that was lost and bring it back to being under the Father. We'll talk about that later. What I want you to go home with is this. That power that was able to raise, that God that was able to raise Jesus, take him all the way up and defeat every level of authority to put him right on top of everyone and is going to bring everything under his submission, under his dominion. That power is available to you. That power is available to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be opened to be able to see what you got. To be able to see what you got. That's the prayer you pray for believers because believers by and large don't know and don't see what they've got. They don't know and they don't see what they got. Like a child looking at his hand and saying, mm -hmm, I have a hand. Or looking at his leg and saying, I have legs. And discovering he can move. And then wants to move fast. And run and jump. And then fly. Every believer will go nuts, go crazy as they find out what they have in Christ. Hi, I'm Jeremy Dawson. And if you liked what you just saw, if it was a blessing, then hit the subscribe button. Come on, you can do it. Hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the bell so that we know you want to hear from us. Lots of videos coming your way, songs, worship, encouragement. Come on, subscribe. Let's take this forward and share with somebody you might know. Write a comment in the section below. But let's see you guys again. Come on, subscribe.